Back here we have stashed a Sears Suburban. Yes, I know it doesn't look like that. That's because that is a 1978 Lawn Chief hood. Because this Sears Suburban never came with a hood. It was dropped off to me with this Briggs and Stratton in it that sat outside like this for roughly about six years before it ever ended up with me. So it sat like this for six years. And now I think that we should get it up and running. I'm gonna grab this engine shroud and give it a yank and see if it'll hold. Oh yeah, right. Please don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Will it turn? Yay, we have working steering. That's our first win right there. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. According to Jesse, it's heavy. I, I think she's just being dramatic. Ha ha. <laughs> you had a hard time too. Yes, I did. So. It's interesting, it's got a seat here that I bet we actually can replace. Because, yeah, it is in both neutrals right now. We did confirm it'll lock into first gear accidentally. Um, horrifying noises are coming from that transmission. So there's no oil. I got a friend that does some tires for me every once in a while in trade for labor. As you can see, I took the time to cut this one out because I don't think that he would appreciate that on his tire changer. 99% sure of that. That needs to come out. I don't know who, because this isn't me. I don't think, unless I've forgotten, was storing bolts that seem to go to this engine shroud. So I think at some point I was dumb enough to think I was going to revive this, even though it had six years worth of water in the carburetor. But at this point, we need to make that disappear and then put something else in. I obviously, we need an engine to put in it. So, Eeny, Meeny, Miney, Mo. Whoa! All right, we got a brand new Duromax from Duromax themselves. Now, we didn't promise we wouldn't do anything interesting with this motor, but that'll be over on RCG Racing. For today, we're just getting the Sears up and running. At the point now we can start unbolting the engine. So we got the attachment piece out. We do have the original attachment clutch pedal here. And this is a real interesting setup here. So this actually slides down through the frame rail. And when you push this, it actually slides it forward, which pushes that pulley out in order to engage the belt system. Not something you see in modern day stuff. I also was trying to figure out why, because this thing was supposedly running for a while, why they didn't just retrofit a hood on it like I had planned on doing. See, there's a bracket right here that I figured I could just put a pin through the top and mount something on. Well, it turns out that basically every single nut, bolt, whatever, it's got these heads like this, every single one is stripped. So, I can't get this piece off until this engine comes off. So that's where we're at now. Hey, right, moment of truth. Let's see if this transaxle is actually working. So, that should be first gear. 
Okay, so we got first. That should be reverse. That should be second. That should be third high. Oh yeah. The original clutch spring was broken, so we found a replacement in the junkyard. I've pulled out the pivot, and after spraying it down with some PB Blaster, I managed to get it out of there. And a lot of people usually will put um, anti-seize on something like this. But recently I had a friend of mine tell me about marine grease and I now use that on just about everything that's going to be outside. It's expensive stuff, but I have found that it most definitely seems to work better than anti-seas over time outside. So I've switched to using it on several different things now. At this point, we should be able to cram this back in here. There it goes. Okay, now we'll hook this on the inside. And pull this back and hook it on here. There we go. Alright, that needs to wear in a little bit, but we have a clutch. There we are, that doesn't look half bad. So we got the monster down here. We got this in place. I've got a really old OMB warehouse cutout plate here underneath for small engine. And what I discovered, now this pulley is horrible. It's absolutely atrocious, but in the next version of this, this will not be here. So bear with me. I blame this purchase thoroughly on Amazon's suggested list. This one here was a little bit too big. This one here at five inches is a little bit bigger than stock. I wanted to stay at the stock four inch size, but it is what it is. What we've done is lined up everything. So as you can see, nice and straight right down through. And in back here, let me come around. If I can get low enough, you'll see I've got that going through the OMB warehouse plate into the stock front mounting hole for the Briggs. And I've got this going through there into the stock mounting hole for the Briggs. And this lined up with that hole. So now what I'm going to do is pull the whole engine off carefully and mark exactly where I need to drill. Drill down through, but we're not done there. I've got these really long bolts that need to go in. So what I need to do is where this goes through, as you can see, it's sitting right there on that. The original motor's crank would have been up here at about six and a half inches up. So what I need to do is put a one inch spacer from here to here and then bolt through it in order to be able to get this up as high as it needs to be. That'll also make it so the clutch assembly will work better because this was meant to work with the pulley up in this area. We use that as a template. We got that on there. They're about one inch spacers. As you can tell, the sun is going down on day one. We're going to drop the motor on, make sure that it fits. Once everything is bolted down, I'll tack a little piece in right in here. And then eventually I'll pull that off and I'll weld it so it's one solid setup. But for now, we just want to see this thing run and drive. 
decided I could use a little bit of motivation this morning where it was only 38 degrees. So I stuck the hood on there in order to see how well that lawn chief hood is going to match up. You know, in the future, we might have to put a 2 or a 4 right about here. I don't know. We'll see. So there's that project. Here's the dragster for over on RCG Racing. That's got an 18 horsepower. We've been able to do pretty good with this. We're on the stock drivetrain and we're able to crank this sucker all the way up into 5600 RPM. And then back here is the old project. Now, if you want a testament as to how durable these motors are, this thing here I built for my son. I'll post a link to a better video on this particular project, but this Duramax I put in here, it has been underwater twice. It's on its third carburetor. I've never replaced anything on it other than the carburetor, and that is totally my fault. And the reason being is you can see that's like a yellowish color to that gas. This thing here, my son has driven around with whatever leftover gas we can find sticking in it for summer upon summer upon summer. It's got to be going on at least like six or seven years with this particular motor at this point. I don't know about you guys. But I'm at the point I want to hear some new engine sounds. Now, it's been my experience in the past with engines of this type that for some reason they kind of air pocket a little bit to start with. But, let's see how it goes here. So, fuel on, choke on, throttle up, Key on. I gotta get this tighter. This is an 83 inch belt, which is interesting because 83 is a very common belt size through a whole ton of different Sears, Craftsman's, things like that. They really, for some reason, like 83, 93, 95, and I think the other one's like 102, if I remember right. So this belt here, is an 83. I really honestly need an 82 to run with this, but I think what I'm going to do is just really tighten up a second spring on this so we can see if we can get a test drive out of this. Now I'm sure while I'm finishing up this hood bracket that I'm hoping will fit, that there's somebody already in the comments saying that I've sold out to corporate and now everything's going to be Duramax and the channel's going to be boring. The answer is no. We will continue to be working on every single small engine we can get a hold of. In fact, actually, working with Duramax will probably allow me to work on more stuff for you guys to see. We will have every brand we can possibly have here, just like we always have. Now, let's see if this hood fits.
There we go. I bolt that right there. That should work. So we need to sort out why that belt's not releasing. Um, there's a tensioner here that I can loosen up. So I'm going to undo that, slide it up, and then we'll try again. It also could be that this pulley is so crummy that it's gripping no matter what, and we need to swap to a better pulley. Let's try this again with a belt guard in place. Now I'm expecting it to make noise because that belt guard might be hitting. underneath that hood because it's got no place to vent the exhaust. I'm going to get a couple of things done and then once that cools down we're going to flip the exhaust so it vents downwards. It'll be louder with a straight pipe but we should do better. Here's the old style that they used to have, and this thing weighs, it's a brick, it really is. This one here is the one that I just took off, and it's a lot lighter weight. Now, what I've done in the past is I have cut them off flush right here where this weld is. As you can see, I did that to the old one, and then I've welded on whatever version of exhaust that I have wanted to do. This, when it's on the engine, points almost straight up so it really doesn't take that much to be able to put a stack on it in this case i want to save that muffler for another video series on building this particular engine and see what we can do with it so i've just grabbed a piece of briggs and stratton uh single exhaust here and i took a chainsaw file and I cleaned out the edges to get that on there and we'll just see how that does that should definitely vent all the hot air out so we have less problems and we'll go from there Now obviously that switch needs to get relocated, the wiring needs to be done, but at this point, as far as the basic situation is concerned, it is up and running. Now, when it comes to over here with this belt guard that is in here, this belt guard I will end up redoing with some actual steel and not this horrific little piece of flimsy here. But it served the purpose for us being able to get out and go take a test drive. 
The exhaust, I will end up eventually getting a hot dog muffler for if I'm going to use this machine around the yard. Obviously, as you guys saw, there is a giant difference between the exhaust being on these engines and the exhaust being off of these engines. A hot dog filter will wake this thing up quite a bit. There are numerous hop-up kits that are capable of being used on this. In fact, one of the suggestions that shows up quite often is the kit from Harbor Freight for the Ghost being installed on one of these. Now granted, you'd have to put a VM22 carburetor on it in order to make the Ghost kit work, but there is a possibility that we might tinker around with. Okay. Recording. Now get behind me. Get behind Behind me. the box. Behind the box? Yep. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, okay, now we need a motor to go in it. Eeny, meeny, miny, and then I want you to yell mo when I'm gonna jump up, and then you're gonna reveal the engine. Okay? Okay. You got it? Yep, I want you to yell mo, and then I'm gonna, so I'm gonna jump when you yell mo so that you can reveal the engine. And just lift it up? Yep. As you jump away, or after you jump away? Yeah, whatever works. Uh, okay. What, whatever you and your demonicness prefer. Okay. Okay? Okay. Okay. All right, obviously that motor is toast, so we need a new motor. Eeny, meeny, miny. Mo! Ah! Okay, that went really corny. Let's try that again. A little less corny. Oh, come a on. little more, a little more mo. A little yelling of mo. Uh, <laughs> big girl voice. <laughs> All right. Obviously, we need a motor for this project. So, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. We got an awesome brand new Duramax to drop in. Thank you Duramax for sending us this motor. We can't wait to do things to it we're not really supposed to. <laughs>